everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today it's all about carving and the carving process. I won't be showing you how to sharpen tools because, as I said the last time I did a carving video, I think, I'm still learning how to sharpen my tools and I don't want to teach you something wrong and then you ruin your tools or your sharpening stone or anything else. So I'm just uh, going to let you know that I sharpen my tools before carving every single time because a dull blade is more dangerous than a sharp blade. And I think I said this before, but there's nothing like a good sharp blade to keep your fingers safe because when you have a sharp blade, you have way more control. So yeah, <laughs> let's get on to carving. As I just told you in the intro, today, today is carving day and I'm really excited. I did transfer the drawing onto the block off camera, but it was fairly simple. What I did was trace it onto tracing paper using um, ink so, so it wouldn't smudge everywhere. And then I placed this, um, usually it has different colors. In this case I'm using a black one, but there is white, there is yellow, blue, I think even green and red, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it is available anymore in that many colors, but it is something that was used back in typewriting years. Um, to put between uh, different sheets of paper. You would write it on the typewriter on several sheets of paper at the same time. And it is perfect when you don't want to smudge graphite everywhere. But I transferred the, the drawing onto the block using... I still used transfer paper because you can draw on one side and flip it and it is already flipped. Because when you are uh, making block prints or any kind of relief print, um, what happens is the drawing gets flipped. So you should flip it before you transfer it. Because when you print, it's going to flip. Yeah. I'm going to be using one very cool gouge. I bought this one recently and I'm extremely happy about it. And then I'm going to be using my usual gouges. Now, I sharpened all of these off camera. I never used this brown linoleum ever, but I'm really excited because the, re the, um, the reviews I get are that it is way better than the grey one. I think it is easier to carve as well, I'm not sure. But I'm well, I'm really happy about this one. I don't think I'm going back to, to the grey linoleum. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm also going to be using this permanent marker. It, it was the cheapest one I could find at the art store. Today I cleaned the kitchen listening to the most hype first few Naruto openings and it felt good. <laughs> I also then proceeded to clean the rest of the house listening to Jojo's Bizarre Adventures openings but those are a more recent obsession for me. I'm starting to feel the need to sharpen my tools again. I usually sharpen before every carving session, but this time, since I'm using six tools, and that means I don't really feel like sharpening my tools right now. I want to carve because I feel like I'm in... Mean, um, yesterday I got in some kind of groove or flow while carving this. I'm having a hard time carving it because it is a very intricate design and that was my mistake making it too too detailed which is a common trap for for me i think i've done that before my first ever lino cut print was a little bit too detailed and the teacher told me that before i did it and i said oh i think i can do it and then she let me try it looks a bit sloppy because it was my first print and because I was too ambitious with it. So it has that look of someone who didn't know how the technique worked. But hey, it was my first print. This tool is like the, the best thing I ever used. Like, if I ever finally get over the, um, the price, <laughs> because it does not feel good to spend 40 
44 euros on a teeny tiny tool even though these are tools that will last my whole life probably these are great tools and I'm really glad I bought this one but I'm just sad that they are so expensive there's only one store where I can get them I really like the store though so at least I like the people there I've been having such a hard time carving this print that I think this is going to be the most satisfying thing to print because carving this has been a ride figuring out how to carve parts and the leaves and stuff that has been hard, that's why I'm focusing on the hair I still need a better approach to, the, to these heart-shaped leaves I've been jumping around a little bit, mostly focusing on the hair, but like I'm trying to get myself to work on the places that I don't want to work because I don't want to leave them all for last, you know? You want to finish a task on a good note, not on a bad one. Yeah, I think I'm going to be working a little bit more on these leaves today, maybe not. This is the third day I'm working on it, I think. Now I need to be extremely careful because yeah, I have two lines very close to each other and they are not a correction, they are both needed and like I carved where I shouldn't have carved and I lost her butt. Yeah, I never thought I would say that. <laughs> But but I lost her butt and now I need to patch it because I lost it. For some reason, don't ask me why I find this so funny, but I, I just find it so funny that I basically lost a fictional character's butt and I actually lost it. It, it wasn't like I, I literally carved it away, <laughs> but it sounds so funny to me. I don't know. I am almost done with the tiny details. I just need to finish up a little little pieces of the roots down here. Yeah. And, then and then I want to show you the very satisfying carving out just the largest white part white parts so, like this. Now it's the time for I think for you the best part. For me, it certainly is the most relaxing part. Okay. The, this clip will look a little bit like it is upside down because my hands will be here the whole time. Yeah, I'm going to start by outlining the, um, the bigger parts of the roots. I gave up on the hairy leg kind of thing. Quite frankly, my hands hurt and I'm getting tired and I don't want to make it worse for myself. Damn, these sounds of the linoleum are so satisfying. I just love them. I think I outlined everything. It's always a mystery when you can't see very well. And I think on camera it's easier to see than in person. The way I carved them, even the parts that are carved away kind of look like they will print even if they won't. I always find fascinating the patterns that the gouges create on the linoleum when you are emptying out large white areas. It always feels to me like I'm um, 
like I'm making those designs on Zen or in Zen gardens. You know those sandy designs? I always feel like I'm doing that when I'm carving large areas of linoleum. When I was little, my dad had a tiny, like a tiny sandbox. It was, I think it was like 20 by 20 centimeters or something like that. And it was a sandbox with a few stones and um, one of those, I don't know what it's called. It's a wooden thing that people use to make the designs on Zen Gardens, but this one was a tiny because it was a super tiny Zen Garden. Carving large areas of linoleum reminds me of that Zen Garden for some reason. Like Zen Gardens in general, but playing with that one and making patterns on that, it feels similar. It's the same kind of soothing feeling when you're carving large areas of linoleum. So it kind of makes sense that the um, patterns kind of look similar. I'm not sure if the gouge is sharp enough, sharp enough. So I think I'm applying too much force and that makes the blade pull the gouge down further into the linoleum. So it makes a deeper cut and sometimes you lose um, definition and it kind of feels like the linoleum suddenly turns extremely brittle and just breaks apart under the gouge and I hate when that happens I love these long strips of linoleum. I never know what to do with them, but I find them interesting. This is getting very yellow because light is running out outside. It's almost 9 p.m. I hope you don't mind the yellowness of my ceiling light. <laughs> but I really want to finish this one today. I really want to print this tomorrow. At least, you know, I want to do a test print tomorrow so I can show you. And I want to finish patching the things tomorrow. But for me to patch those things, I need to finish this part first. So please bear with me and the yellow light. I think I finished carving and I'm extremely excited. I know this now looks extremely yellow. I'm really sorry, but tomorrow we'll take a test print. The only thing I'm going to do still today is round out the edges then. so got my big scissors and it's just it's really just rounding out the corners plus i think the, the block looks cooler when it has rounded edges so basically i do this with all my blocks unless it is something that would affect the the, paint, the, um, the print There we go. Yeah. I see you in a bit. For you it's a bit. For me it's... Hey there. I, yeah, I took two test prints. They were obviously not very well printed, to be fair. But this was just for me to see 
what I need to change. Now, I think none of them are very well printed. I forgot to press to press the paper here. But that's that place you can see here it's okay. I don't need to correct anything there, I think. But on this second print, um, you can see way better the place where I forgot to not carve the leg out and then where I carved out the butt. Can you see how much better it looks just by having these lines over here? So what I'm going to do is something I actually learned on YouTube. I will link the video down below. But basically what I'm going to do is cut out the place where I carved what I shouldn't have carved and then transfer that onto a new block. I will use like a corner or something. It has to be a block with the exact same thickness and exact same texture, everything. Even the back is exactly the same. Just to make sure that the patch doesn't show on the final print. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut out the, the part I messed up. I'm, I think I'm going to make the patch go like this, like a almost like a moon. I think that doing a tiny, tiny patch may be harder to do well. While the bigger patch, you have a little bit more of a margin of error, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> So yeah, this is what I'm going to do. It's my first time patching a print or a block, so please bear with me. I'm not going to be teaching you how to do this. I'm just going to show you the process of me trying to do it, okay? Okay, so I finished cutting out the cutout for the, for the patch, or the hole for the patch. And I did turn off the camera during most of it because I was cutting towards myself and you shouldn't do that. And I didn't want to cut myself on camera and I wanted to be able to see what I was doing better. So I was... so I didn't have the camera in front of my face. So yeah. Now let's transfer this to the other block. I made the outline a bit thicker because you always want to cut the patch a little bit bigger than you need so that when you put it in place you can cut away the things that are in excess or the parts that are too big instead of having to add material which is harder to do. Hopefully it will fit better now. Okay, so with the probably the worst patch ever made um, cut out already, I'm going to glue it down and then I'm going to sandwich it between uh, parchment paper, like kitchen one, um, to keep it from sticking to the press um, and to the felt because I'm going to use um, the printing press that I usually use. It is a vertical one so I can just leave it overnight. I'm a bit scared because I spent so many hours on this print so far and I'm really scared to mess this up with the patch. Patch, yeah. So what I'm going to do first is trim a little bit of this because it is making a larger volume than it is supposed to. But I'm going to spread a thin bit of glue all around on this, on this edge and then I'm going to press this in and then I'm going to put glue on the underside. I think that's it. Let me check very quickly if I don't need to add anything else. 
I just checked the video and I noticed that I need a very thin cotton piece. I don't think I have one. Like cotton fabric. I only have this... Well, it's not too, too thin. Um, these, these are test prints. I'm not sure if this is the thinner one. Maybe I could use a piece of this. I do not have any other piece of fabric that is thin enough for this. At least not on me. I know we have some at home. But I'm not sure. Now something I'm going to try. I hope this is okay. I'm going to try with a tissue paper. The reason why I'm confident enough to do this is because the glue I'm using is resistant to... it's waterproof or water resistant. But I'm going to do this with a tissue paper because I don't think this fabric is thin enough. Oof. I am scared that I'm not going to be able to print this properly if I don't use a thinner thing. So I'm going to be using a super thin, it's even very transparent, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to be using this because I'm scared the, the fabric will be too thick. If this doesn't work, I guess we'll be using the fabric then, just using a spatula. Because I also not just, I don't want to just apply the glue. I want to push the fabrics, the fabric, the, the fibers away from the side so they don't get sandwiched, sandwiched in. I don't know if that is a verb. Oh no, 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 no. That's the opposite of what I want. This just looks like a very messy big patch, when it is not even that big. It is messy though. Do I think I should have used the cotton tissue? The cotton cloth? Absolutely. Uh, am I going to do that now? No. <laughs> I'm going to give this a chance first. using parchment paper because in theory it should be able to unglue itself oh, sorry. to unglue itself I'm just going to try and stretch it a bit we don't want wavy glue please don't give me wavy glue let's put this on the press so what I'm doing right now actually is put it into this press it's not supposed to be a printing press, but it can be used as that. So I'm going to put the felt on top. Here. Just adding the felt. Yes, it is very dirty. I, When I bought it, it was already fairly dirty. And then I made this by accident. So, okay. Let's put this one here. And... We need to tighten it a little bit. Okay.
good morning um, let's see if this got glued properly let's take off the I hope okay. it seems leveled which is extremely important now let's see if I can peel this I think it worked pretty well. I don't think it is a bump big enough to impact the print, the final print, since I think I'm going to print this by hand instead of using the press. There will be a huge gap in the line. I don't think it is a big deal because this line doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be there. And what I think I'm going to do is break up the line there as well. I'm gonna break the line here and pretend it was on purpose <laughs> and hopefully now I can carve away the excess next time I need to patch something I'm going to be making it like a square patch or something because these irregular shapes were it was extremely hard to make sure it was the right size to fit Hopefully next time I can do it better. <laughs> I think the tissue paper was a good idea because I, well, I haven't printed this yet, but I think judging by the thickness of the patch with the tissue paper, I think it would be too thick with the cloth I have. With the patch? Now she has a butt and a leg, and I was actually really sad when I found, when I understood that I had cut off her butt and her leg, and I was so scared of doing the same to the belly. I almost did the same thing here, and man, I was so sad when I did this. I still only had this tiny little bit carved, and I felt like I was wasting a whole big uh, A4 block of linoleum just because I cut off that part you know in this case it made sense for her to have both otherwise the roots would be coming from nowhere and you know people need butts you know <laughs> oh. oh yeah let's carve the green part before measuring because the green part are tiny stamps so I can uh, put green on the um, on the top here there sorry for the background noise uh, it's too hot to close the window um, I made this tiny stamp to be able to print some green leaves all around I will test this stamp and it is pretty janky I just used some bits of MDF board a lot of glue and the stamp itself one day I will make pretty stamps right now I'm just it's too hot to be thinking what is good in terms of um, technical woodworking and stuff. So, you can see I put too much glue. Well, right now it doesn't really matter. All it matters if, is, does this print properly? So, what I'm going to do is grab a regular uh, stamp pad just to test the stamp itself because I'm not going to be using the press with this boy. Like, tiny one, it's just a cheap one, just to check. Oh, this is kinda dry. <laughs> just to check if it's going to print anything, really. And to check if the shape works with the, with the rest of the print. It kinda works, and I think 
because it doesn't work as well as I thought, I think it may work better than I was expecting. And what I mean by this is I thought it would leave maybe um, too much color, but because I'm not able to press too much because this is hard and I do not have a foamy layer in between the stamp itself and the and the, um, ah okay yeah I think I think it's pretty nice like I was thinking of printing in this type of places you know to add a little bit more variety in the dimensions to it and also I think what I'm going to do is layer these a little bit like what happened here where I printed very close and it basically uh, overlapped. I want to do that with the green to give it a little bit more depth with the with the green. Okay, so the stamp works as I almost as I intended, maybe a little bit better because it doesn't print very well and that looks better in my opinion. In this case, not in every case. Um, so yeah, I am going to move on uh, paper cutting stage. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing the whole carving process and hearing the sound of the linoleum. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I and I hope you are excited for next week. And also, don't forget, there's a link in the description for my Gumroad where you can find and pre-order the print we are preparing. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next week for the printing process.